Thanks for joining us here today at Victory Church, where we invite people to belong before they believe. If you want to know more about who we are and what we do, or if any of our messages have impacted your life and you want to partner with us by giving into this ministry, we invite you to do so by visiting our website at victory.church. Now, let's check out this week's message from our Oklahoma City campus pastor, Oscar Ortiz. Baptism means walking into the water and going underwater and coming out a different person, having the understanding and knowledge that Jesus Christ is now Lord and Savior and ruler, ruler of your life. Before we start baptisms, I, I believe there are four groups of people here that I'd like to talk to for just a moment. The, the first group is the obvious, is the people that are getting baptized that we're gonna celebrate. And we're excited because to you this means new life, a new beginning, a new faith, a new way of life. The other group of people are the people that are here that I've been following Jesus, but you haven't gotten baptized. You made a choice to follow him, but for, for one reason or another, you have yet to make a public confession. I want to talk to you as well because you're going to have an opportunity to get baptized today. And I encourage you, like we had seven baptisms at the, at the nine. And over half of those were spontaneous of people who chose to get baptized. And I'll, I'll dive into that just a little bit. The, the other group of people are the people that are here and you haven't got, gotten baptized primarily because you don't know Jesus. And we're going to give you an opportunity to not just to know him, but to begin to walk with him as, and for him to become your Lord and, and your Savior. And the last group of people are the people who know Jesus and you have gotten baptized. This is for you too. What do I mean is that this represents new believers that are coming into the faith. That biblical, we'll, we'll get into that. The biblical, we are called to, to accept, to embrace, to love, to disciple, and to help them begin a walk with Christ. That's our job. Everybody say, our job. This is not just for the staff. This is for all of our job. As we accept people into the community of Christ, this is for us as well. And we want to welcome that. Uh, Matthew chapter 28 says this, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to follow all that I commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Baptism, two things that I'm going to talk to you for the next 10, 15 minutes is baptism is an act of obedience and baptism is a way and an opportunity to witness to people. Baptism is an act of obedience because we're called to do this by Jesus Christ. There's a story about a reporter who made his way to, to South Florida after the devastated uh, aftermath from Hurricane Andrew. And as they were walking through multiple neighborhood, neighborhoods full of debris and destruction and, and the things that we've all, we are all familiar with that we've seen in the, in the news, strangely enough, not far from their reporter, there, there was a house that even in spite of all the mess surrounding it, the house stood still. And right in front of that house, there was a gentleman with a broom just kind of beginning to to clean and to pick up a little bit of the pieces from all the debris from the surrounding areas. So this reporter makes his way to this man and say, excuse me, sir, can I ask you a couple of questions? Um, how can this be possible that your house standing still? Your neighbors around you, they're, 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 they're ceiling, the roof is, the walls have come down. There's destruction all around you. But yet in the midst of all of this, after the hurricane Andrew, your house remains still. The gentleman simply looked at him and said, I'm not really sure. I knew that when I built this house, I was given a code to follow by the state of Florida. So I just followed it. When the code told me the, the size of the wood be beams that I would need for my ceiling, for, 
for the foundation, for everything around us. I just follow the code and I did was what I was told because the code said that if I build it to code, it should withstand a hurricane. And I guess my neighbors didn't follow the code. And that was his answer. Because we understand this, that as believers, we are to follow the code as well. And Christ calls us to obedience. When you read the Bible, when you read the, the New Testament, you see the story of the, of the church of Christ being founded upon obedience. Jesus calls us to obey. Just in this verse, it says, make disciples, baptize those who believe, and teach them to obey his commands. If no other reason, we, we get baptized today because Jesus calls us to obey. Matthew 28, 20 says, teach him to follow all that I've commanded you. And obedience tells the world that we are followers of Jesus Christ. One of the, one of the things that I love about doing baptisms of, of the way that we do it is that we recognize that there are different people that can speak into the life of a person, the spiritual life. So sometimes we'll have Moms and dads, and dads join one of our pastors as, as they baptize their children. Why? Because we recognize that this is a, a family, a community decision, and we celebrate it as such. So we welcome people to do that with our pastors because we understand this, that once they come out of the pool, it is not just a pastoral job, but it is a community job to accept and to help those people that have given their life to Jesus. The second thought is this, baptism is an opportunity to witness. So as you read the New Testament and as you study church, church history, you recognize this, that in Bible times, baptism was the initial act when people would profess to become believers of Jesus. Now, let's talk a little bit about the difference of what we have now versus how it started. What we have now is sometimes we ask people to raise their hands if want, they want to give their life to Jesus. There's nothing wrong with that. We'll even say what we call a sinner's prayer. There's nothing wrong with that, even though there isn't really a sinner's prayer in the Bible. But what we, we do that as a way to help people just begin to pray. But in the early church, there was no raising of hands. There was no sinner's prayer. All they had was water. So for someone to commit their life to Jesus... The first initial act was the act of baptism. And the, one of the ways that the church grew was because people will begin to get baptized and to give the life to Jesus. When someone would get baptized, it immediately meant that you're becoming a disciple and that you would start now to practice the teachings of Jesus. You see, I was a little bit different. It was... To get baptized was equivalent with becoming a disciple and submerging yourselves in the, te the teachings of Jesus. And in fact, the word Christian did not come about until after about 30 or 40 years after Jesus died and resurrected. So this is what that means. That before there were Christians, there was community. Before there were Christians... There was a church. When people were getting baptized, they were not baptizing to join Christianity. They were getting baptized to join a community of believers who were following Jesus wholeheartedly. Why is that important? Because it's, it's shifted somehow along the years. And sometimes in our Western filter, in our Western mentality, we see, it, we see baptism and, and we see Christianity as just another thing that, that is kind of good and for our culture and something that we do and it's nice and we clap. But this, this pool represents so much more than that. So I want you to go to your Bibles if you have them or your phones and go and open and hold uh, Acts chapter 11 because we're going to dive in just a little bit it's not on the screens but I felt it was necessary to kind of give you the the history of how we got here as believers in Acts chapter 11 as you're finding yourself your way to that tells us the story of a Jew by the name Stephen who was killed who was martyred who was stoned to death because of his faith in Jesus Christ that begins and because of that 
taking place, that kind of sets the, the, the temperature, the, the, what was happening in their culture of that day because the Roman Empire was about to, to persecute every single person who would confess Jesus Christ as their Lord and as their Savior. So if you would confess Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior, you would begin to be persecuted by the Roman Empire. Stephen kind of gives us a picture of, that escala of, of the escalated uh, turmoil for Christians in that day or for people who were followers of the way. Because of that, a lot of Jews fled Jerusalem. They made the tough decision to, to leave Jerusalem and they would make their way to Antioch. They would make their way to Cyprus. They would make their way to Cyrene, far from Jerusalem. But they were large enough metropolis where they could sort of become uh, uh, anonymous for a little bit. So in Acts 11, we hear this. There were two groups of, of believers of Jewish believers that made their way to Antioch, but they were different. One of the groups of the believers believed that the message of the gospel was only for Jews. The other group of believers believed that the message of the gospel was not only for Jews, but for Gentiles as well. So we have a dilemma here. And if you study church, church history, that's why we have the, the Council of Jerusalem, where these church, early church leaders gathered together and said, we need to figure this out. And after they read, they read the, uh, not just the Torah, but they, uh, they studied the witnesses of Jesus, those who have walked with Jesus, they recognized the message of Jesus and the gospel. And then Peter's vision that, that he has that proves that God was not only for Jews, but for Gentiles as well, as well, that decided the gospel is for everybody. One of the reasons why you and I get to partake of this message is because these people led by the Holy Spirit decided that the message was for Gentiles and you and I are able to receive the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we are thankful for that. We are thankful for that decision. So their decision kind of would go a little bit like this. Their reasoning went, went something like this, that later on in Antioch, they would hear about. It says, whereas Judaism extends hospitality to strangers, whereas Jesus transformed the matter from a ritual of welcome into an attitude of the heart, whereas rather than welcoming a stranger, the stranger becomes a neighbor. Therefore, be it resolved that in Christ, there is no Jew or Gentile. And we celebrate that because I'm in salvation for you and I. So the citizens of Antioch, the Jews, non-Jews, the believers and non-believers, when they heard this, when they were watching believers act upon this decree, when they witnessed, they began to marvel. Because you have to remember that before then, people who saw the Jews, they believed, I mean, the, Jews, the message for the Jews is not for us. And Jews kind of walked around feeling like we're superior to anybody else because we are the children of Yahweh. But now they begin to see something different. They begin to see something completely different they have seen before. And because their demeanor changed, they thought if this demeanor represents Jesus, and this, then these people are more than followers. So they begin to call them Christ, Christ chants. Christians, not because they went to church, but because how much they love their non-Jewish neighbors. So when we get into a pool and we proclaim our life to Jesus, notice that it means more than just joining Christianity. And I know that sometimes, even in our culture, we say, you know, we, we receive Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. To be honest, accepting Jesus is not personal. It's communal. You may make that decision by yourself, but it's a decision that we all come together as part of a community. Your, your choosing to follow Jesus cannot be personal. It has to be communal because you cannot live a, a, a life full of faith isolating yourself from believers. And if you're watching me online or if you're just here present, hear this message. That pool represents death to life, but it also represents choosing to follow Jesus in the midst of a community that can support you, that can speak life into you, that can keep you accountable. 
three people get excited about that. Come on. So now let's read Acts chapter 11. It says, verse 19 says, So then those who were scattered because of persecution that occurred in connect connection to Stephen made their way to Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, speaking the word to no one except to Jews alone. But there were some of them, men of Cyprus and Cyrene, who came to Antioch and began to speak in, to the Greek as well, preaching the good news of the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a large number who believed turned to the Lord. The news about them reached the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas off to Antioch. Then when, when he arrived and witnessed the grace of God, he rejoiced and began to encourage them all with resolute heart to remain true, true to the Lord. For he was a good man and full of the Holy Spirit and faith. And considerable numbers were added to the Lord. Notice, notice there were no Christianity, but the church was growing. And he left for Tarsus to look for Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. And for an entire year, they met with the church and taught considerable numbers of people. And the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. Why? Because of that, how they began to treat their neighbors and not Jewish believers. Christianity has, has very little to do with church building. It has everything to do with the community that you're a part of. If you're struggling in your Christianity, it's probably because you're struggling in your community. If you're struggling with your faith... It's probably because you're trying to do it alone. Now, let me remind you, it's okay to struggle with our faith. And I hope all of us at some point in time struggle with it. That we get to the place that we, that we learn, that we find out what Christ has to say about our faith. Romans chapter 6 tells us, what shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin so the grace may increase? Far, far from it. How shall we... Who died to sin still live in it? Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death. So that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too may walk in newness of life. Baptism is a live reenaction of what Jesus did. When we do it, we're saying, Jesus... I'm dying with you. Jesus, I'm resurrecting with you. I'm walking into the water, being buried underwater, but coming back full of life, a new creation, a new creature, resurrecting with Jesus. It's a visual that tells the world we're no longer the same. We're following Jesus, the only way to heaven, the way, the truth, and the life. In salvation, we have been baptized into Christ's death, but also resurrected with him. In fact, the word baptism, in the Greek is the word baptizo, which means to dip repeatedly, to immerse, to submerge. It also means to cleanse by dipping or submerging, to wash, to make clean with water, to wash oneself, to bathe, or to overwhelm. But the word baptism was commonly used in the Greek when you needed to change the color of a piece of cloth or of clothing, you would take that cloth and you will baptize it into water with a dye. And when that would take place, the cloth or the, the, the clothing would come out looking completely different because of the baptism. So this is the, the meaning for us that when we go underwater through the power of the gospel, through the power of the Holy Spirit, and through the, through the, through, through the grace of our, of our Lord Jesus Christ, we become a different person. We become a new creature. And we begin to see a new change in us. You're living your old way and you're accepting a new way of life and you accept a new faith. So for the four groups of people, we have those of you that are getting baptized. This is the mark of something. I don't know where you come from. I don't know what your past. I don't know what you've gone through. I don't know what, what led you to this point. But I'm just here to remind you that this is a new beginning. That this is a new start. The Bible says that you become a new creation. 
For those of you that have got that have followed Jesus but have not gotten baptized, I encourage you, follow the commandment of Jesus and see how that flips and shifts your Christianity and your faith. Maybe you, you got baptized when you were five years old or six years old and it really, you don't remember the meaning that it had for you. I encourage you, do it again. We have shirts, we have clothes, we have, we, have, we have an amazing volunteer waiting for you. If you want to make that decision, even as we begin to get baptized, I encourage you, make your way to the stage ride to talk to one of our volunteers and they'll get, you, they'll get you ready because we believe that baptism is for everyone. Now, it doesn't mean that you don't need baptism to, to be saved, but you need it to kind of make a, a public confession of your faith of what God is doing inside of your heart and inside of your soul. There's some of you that don't know Jesus in just a little bit. You're going to have an opportunity to know him. to know Him, And you're going to be invited to be part of the community of faith. That you don't have to do this alone. And the last group is for those of you that are following Jesus and have already been baptized. We're going to have a line of people welcome those that are getting out of the water to to. To symbolize that you're being welcomed into this church and to this community. That you're welcomed into this body. It is our job to help them grow in their faith. It is our job to find out, to get to know their names. To find out, hey, let's do coffee. When can we meet? I want to hear your story. I want to see what God is doing for you. Let me share my story. Let's pray for each other. Let's believe that God is going to continue to transform what, he, what you used to be into a new creation. I'm going to invite you to stand, and I'm going to invite those that are getting baptized to, be, to stand as well. I want you to stand, I want you to reach your hands to this way as we pray for them. Father, we thank you that there's power in the name of Jesus. And God, we thank you for every person that is making the decision today to give their life away to you. God, we pray that this beginning becomes just something much more powerful in the life that they will never forget. God, I pray for every person that is in this room that needs to get baptized. I pray for every believer in this room that's here the challenge to accept these new believers into the community of faith. May you help us, Lord, strengthen these brothers and sisters. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you for joining us here today for this week's message. And here at Victory Church, we are called to equip people to live in His presence, move beyond ourselves, and be transformed. And this can only happen through your radical generosity, your serving, and your prayers. If this message or any of our messages have impacted your life and you would like to partner with us by giving into this ministry, you can do so by visiting our website at victory.church/give. Thank you again for joining us and have a great day.